Every day, Americans buy over one and a half million jars of peanut butter. 94% of households keep at least one jar in the pantry. The average child will eat 1,500 peanut butter sandwiches before graduating high school. This $2 billion obsession sits in nearly every kitchen in the country. But what actually happens between the peanut field and that familiar, sticky spread? The Aztecs were grinding roasted peanuts into paste 500 years before any American factory existed. But modern peanut butter started with a health crisis. In 1895, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg patented a process for making nut paste. He marketed it to patients at his Michigan sanitarium who couldn't chew solid food. The original recipe involved boiling peanuts for six hours, then grinding them into a bland, mushy paste, nothing like today's spread. The real breakthrough came in 1922, when chemist Joseph Rosefield discovered partial hydrogenation. By adding hydrogen to peanut oil, he could prevent separation and extend shelf life from weeks to years. Rosefield licensed his process to Peter Pan in 1928, then launched his own competing brand in 1932. He called it Skippy. That name still sits on shelves today. Modern peanut butter starts in Georgia, where over 50% of American peanuts grow in sandy coastal plains. Farmers harvest runner peanuts in September, the variety preferred for consistent size and high oil content. The peanuts arrive at processing facilities still covered in red Georgia clay. First stop, cleaning. Machines remove rocks, stems, and shriveled nuts using gravity tables and air blowers. Color sorters scan each peanut, rejecting any with dark spots. A single moldy peanut can contaminate an entire batch with off flavors. The cleaned peanuts move to roasting ovens heated to 320 degrees. Inside, the nuts tumble continuously for 40 to 60 minutes. This is where flavor is born. Raw peanuts taste like beans. Roasted peanuts smell like the jar you're about to open. After roasting, the peanuts enter cooling cylinders immediately. Without rapid cooling, residual heat would continue cooking the nuts, pushing them from golden to burnt within minutes. The cooled peanuts move through blanching machines that blast hot air to loosen the papery red skins. Rubber belts rub the skins away and split each nut into halves, exposing the pale interior. Workers inspect blanched peanuts on conveyor belts, removing damaged pieces that escaped earlier sorting. Then comes grinding. The first grinder produces coarse meal, breaking peanuts into rough pieces. The second grinder, a high-speed co-minuter spinning at thousands of RPM, transforms that meal into smooth paste through intense shearing action. Friction alone pushes temperatures to 170 degrees. So roasting creates flavor, blanching removes skins, and grinding creates paste. But if the process is identical everywhere, why does natural peanut butter separate while Jif stays perfectly smooth for years? The answer sits in a 2% addition. During second stage grinding, manufacturers inject hydrogenated vegetable oil into the paste stream. This solid fat disperses throughout the liquid peanut oil, creating a network that holds everything together. Think of it like rebar in concrete. Without those fat particles, gravity pulls solids down and pushes oils up within days. Salt enters at 1.5%, sweeteners at 2%. Vacuum chambers extract air bubbles, preventing the oxidation that causes rancidity. The journey from factory to jar reveals something worth knowing about labels. The FDA requires peanut butter to contain at least 90% peanuts. But terminology matters more than you'd think. If the only additives are salt, sweeteners, and fully hydrogenated oils, it qualifies as peanut butter. Add palm oil instead, and the product legally becomes peanut butter spread. 
Many jars labeled natural use palm oil to prevent separation without refrigeration. Palm oil comes from plants, technically natural, but it contains significantly more saturated fat than hydrogenated alternatives. True natural peanut butter lists only one or two ingredients, peanuts, maybe salt. The oil layer floating on top isn't a defect. It's proof nothing artificial is holding your peanut butter together. Here's the part that surprises everyone. One 12-ounce jar contains approximately 540 peanuts. Each contributed oils, proteins, and aromatic compounds to the final product. But the jar you grab might contain less actual peanut than you expect. That 90% FDA minimum means 10% can be sweeteners, stabilizers, and oils. Premium brands often exceed 95% peanuts. Budget brands hover near the minimum. Here's how to check without reading labels. Flip the jar in the store. If contents require stirring, you're getting more peanut, less filler. If everything stays perfectly suspended, stabilizers are working. The weight test works too. Heavier jar means more peanut, less air. What sits in that jar represents remarkable nutritional density. Peanuts provide roughly 25% protein by weight, making peanut butter one of the most protein-rich spreads available. The natural oils contain mostly monounsaturated fats, the same heart-healthy type found in olive oil. One serving delivers vitamin E, magnesium, and potassium. From Aztec grinding stones to Kellogg's sanitarium patients to modern factories producing 250,000 jars daily, peanut butter evolved from ancient paste to industrial marvel. 540 peanuts, precisely roasted, rapidly cooled, mechanically blanched, and ground twice. All compressed into that familiar jar. Next time you twist open that lid and smell the familiar nutty aroma, you'll understand the journey. Not just peanuts, but centuries of innovation, precise roasting temperatures, two-stage grinding, and carefully calculated stabilizers. From Georgia fields to your kitchen counter, from September harvest to your morning toast. All of it engineered so your knife glides through smoothly every single time. So which one sits in your pantry right now? The kind that separates or the kind that doesn't?